everyone, I'm Antoinette Staples and I'm so looking forward to bringing you another video this week. If you haven't had a chance to check out my previous videos, please do so. You can find them on my channel. I'd love to hear your comments, so be sure to write me a note letting me know if it has been a blessing to you or if you've shared it with someone else. This week, I want to talk about the distraction of comparison. And while we're talking about distractions, let me just say a side note. Lord knows there are so many distractions when I'm trying to record my videos and mishaps with the camera and so many different things, but that's not what this video is about. I am so happy that it is finally working for me and I'm able to record this so I can bring this message forth. Um, so again, I just want to talk about the distraction of comparison. As I was preparing for this message this week, God had sent me several messages and things to study. One of them was a quote that I saw earlier this week, and it was posted by Lisa Bevere, really awesome woman of God, follow her ministry pretty closely. And the quote simply said, we cannot be distracted by comparison if we are captivated by purpose. I don't know about you, but I want to be captivated, engulfed, wrapped up in, all the way submerged in my purpose. Um, I don't have time to compare myself to other people and I've been even making it a conscious effort not to be so active on social media so I don't have those temptations in front of me. But if we are real with ourselves, how often are we struggling with this? How often are we struggling with comparing ourselves to others? I don't know about men, but I know for a fact as women, we do this far too often. Looking at the other women that we see on social media who have what appears to be perfect bodies or looking at people's careers and people traveling the world and all these things that we could easily get distracted by and saying, Lord, I wish I had that or I wish I had this or I wish I looked this way or I wish I looked that way. Um, even when I first started my natural hair journey, I've been natural um, for six years, but when I first started my natural journey, I didn't know a thing about going natural. I didn't know what to do to my hair or what not to do. And I remember I was a product junkie right away. I bought all these different products and just things that I did not need um, because I was looking at everyone else's hair. I want a hair like them. Didn't even know how long they had been natural. Didn't know anything about them. All I knew was like, her hair is amazing. Oh my gosh, I want hair like that. And the more that I thought about it, I said, I'm wasting time and I'm wasting money. What I need to do is figure out what type of hair do I have and what type of products work for me. And the moment that I learned that, I figured out a regimen that worked for me. And now I have all the time people saying to me, what do you do to your hair? They want to figure out what I do to my hair so that their hair can look the same. And I always encourage women in saying, this is what works for me, but I would encourage you to figure out what works for you and what works for your hair. Um, growing up with an identical twin sister, I know too often we have been compared. People always look at us, even want to put us side by side in comparison, figure out what the differences are between us. Shame on them. Please don't do that, uh, especially as we are adults. It's not right, uh, but people do that to us all the time, really. My sister and I don't easily get offended, but we have people that do that often, and we think about it. My goodness, people are always comparing us, but not do others do it all the time but we also do it to ourselves ladies really how often are we comparing our lives to someone else so in my study i was reading the story of leah and rachel two sisters and if you've not not been familiar with the story of leah and rachel you can find it in the book of genesis genesis 29 and 1 going all the way through genesis 30 to about verse 25 but as you read the story of these two sisters what you will find is that this is a story of envy and one comparing to another, thinking, oh, how I wish I had this, and the other one wishing that they had the life of the other one. Leah was the older sister and Rachel the younger. And Jacob came along and he loved Leah, or excuse me, he loved Rachel and he wanted to work for Rachel to take her hand in marriage. So he worked to marry Rachel for seven years. Let's just stop right there, okay? He worked for seven years. Um, to marry Rachel and at the end of the seven years he was given Leah he was deceived and he was given Leah and so he married Leah um, and he had to work another seven years before he could marry Rachel but in all of this time we see that 
Leah's womb was blessed, and the Lord blessed her and found favor on her to be able to bear children for Jacob. Rachel had all of, of Jacob's love. Jacob loved her dearly, but she was not able to conceive for many years. Eventually, as we continue to read through the text, we find that Rachel was eventually blessed, and the Lord did bless her womb, and she was um, able to conceive, and she bore a son named um, Joseph. But for many years, she envied her sister Leah because she was not able to give Jacob the one thing that she desired, which was children. And so we see that very often. So here it is, Leah wanted the love that Rachel received, and Rachel had the love, but she wanted to be able to bear children for Jacob. And I thought about that, and I said, my God, how often does our life look very similar? where we desire what our sister has. Maybe you don't have a biological sister, but our sisters in Christ. We look at someone who appears to be successful. We look at someone who looks to have a family. You know, they're married with 2.5 kids and a dog and the white picket fence. We don't know what that couple has struggled with or the challenges that they have faced. And so shame on us for comparing our lives to them or being easily or quickly to say what someone deserves or what they should have um, in comparison to us. All of us have been guilty of it, wanting something that someone else has, desiring what someone else has, not knowing what they've gone through, how long they've labored, how long they've toiled, how long that they've pleaded with God about giving them something. And the one thing that they desire, they still yet do not have. Or they have, they've been blessed tremendously in one area, but the one thing that they desire, the Lord has yet to give it to them. Doesn't mean it's a no, it just means that it hasn't happened for them yet. And we look through this glass, a magnifying glass that we are able to look through called social media, where people's lives are put on display. Some look to have perfect lives, others appear not to be so perfect, and it really is about how transparent they are on social media. But we see all these stories, and here we are with our judgmental eye, saying what they deserve. We're cleaning their glass, making it look picture perfect, bragging about people we don't even know, and tearing it down, tearing down others that we don't know, throwing rocks at their glass, trying to um, shatter their lives, and, and we don't even know them. Shame on us. We compare ourselves to others. We look at our state and say, Lord, why am I still single when so-and-so is getting married? I know the life that they lived. I know the things that they, they've done. Lord, um, why is it that I'm not being elevated on my job and promoted when I see how she comes to work late and she doesn't do her job or she's not a team player? Shame on us. We look at other people's gifts and talents and say, I've been doing it all these years, and yet and still you haven't blessed me the way that you blessed them. We all do that. But how much more would the Lord bless our lives? Or how much more progress would we make if we took that focus off of other people and we put it on ourselves? And instead of looking at someone else's life and dismantling their lives, if we looked at our own self and said, Lord, what is it that you want me to do in this season? We're in March, three months in, we're starting, we're officially in March now, and we're roughly three months into the new year. What have you done with the time that God has given you? Have you started taking the steps that you need to take to live out your purpose, to be captivated in your purpose? Have you been obedient to the Lord and move when God has told you to move, to do what God has called you to do? If you not, then you don't have time to be on social media or on Facebook looking at someone else's life trying to figure out why they should or should not have something or why they're deserving or why they're not deserving. You ought to be putting that focus and that attention on your own life. So should I. That's what I've decided to do, and the Lord convicted me about that. Why are you so consumed with other people when there's a calling that I have for you? There's something that I've purposed you to do. There's work that I have for you to do. And so we should be measuring ourselves by our own work. When we look at Galatians, the book of Galatians 6 and 4, it says, Let each one examine his own work, and then in rejoicing, he will be able to rejoice himself in himself and not another. Let us examine our own work. That's what the scripture tells us. Let us examine our own work according to the work that God has called for us to do in order for us to look at what it is that God has called, called us to do, how God has told us to be obedient, the different steps that God has told us to, to take. And then it says, he will have rejoicing, excuse me, he will have rejoicing in himself 
and not another. If you've been obedient and you know you've been obedient and you know that you're doing what it is that God has called you to do, when God moves on your behalf, then you know that you're operating that work with your faith because we know scripture tells us that faith without works is dead. So if you have the faith and you're doing the work, you'll begin to see God moving in your life. And then you won't be consumed or concerned about other people or comparing yourself to others. You will be examining your own work. You can look at yourself and the Holy Spirit can convict you when you're not doing what you're supposed to do when you're spending time with God and you're seeking the Lord. And so that's something that I want to encourage you in. And so we need to be mindful of that. We look at the scripture and in Romans 12 verses 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. We should be interested in, in living out the will of God in our lives. We should be interested and concerned about doing what is pleasing to God, not what is pleasing to man. Comparison leads us to feelings of pride and arrogance when you're comparing yourself and making yourself feel righteous and you become self-righteous because you're saying, well, I don't do this and they do that or I'm comparing myself to the good works of man and not to what God says is righteous and holy, right? And so some of us are guilty of that. But sometimes comparison can also lead to us feeling inferior. It can bring about feelings of insecurity and it then results in feeling defeated. We feel defeated when we feel like God hasn't moved on our behalf. Lord, I've been praying to you like Rachel. I've been asking you to bless me in a certain area. And let's talk about our womb, the womb where we birth out dreams and purpose and, and creativity and life to, to our vision, right? And so some of us say, Lord, I haven't been given a vision yet. I haven't been given a dream. And I've been praying to you about that thing. And much like Rachel, I've been praying and I've been seeking him. And I have all these other things. I've, I have all these other things. But the one thing that I'm seeking you for, I have yet to obtain. Hold out because as we see in the story of Leah and Rachel, God does bless her womb. God gives her that thing that she, she desires. He blesses her with her son, Joseph. And so if we look at our own personal lives and we are not conformed to this world, we're transformed by the renewing of our mind, which is a daily process. It's something that we have to do daily. Then we will realize that it's not about what man sees. It's not about man's timing. It's about God's timing. People now ask me, my twin sister's married, and if people ask me, when are you going to get married? I smile and say, when the Lord is ready and when it's my time. Not a moment before. It's not something that I'm eager for because right now I'm captivated and purpose. I don't have any time to be distracted with comparison, not comparison to other people. I have friends that are single and they wonder, they're older than me, and they wonder, Lord, when are you going to bless me with a mate? When are you going to bless me with children? When are you going to bless me to be married? And the exciting thing that I can say is that we refocus ourselves and when they think about the goodness of God, they have no time to be concerned concerned with where other people are, but they can think about, Lord, I'm right where you want me to be. And when it is time, you will bless me. When I am ready, you will bless me. And so in that time where we're focusing on our purpose, we're captivated in purpose, we should be seeking the Lord about how can I prepare for the blessings and the purpose that you have for my life? Lord, what work is it that you want me to do right now? How can I get ready for the blessing? Because the door will open. The opportunity will come. The favor will come for us. God is going to present us with his favor. God is going to open up those doors. He gonna, he's going to give us those blessings. Are we ready for it? Because a lot of times we haven't gotten it because we're not ready for it yet. Our hearts are not in the right places. So we ask the Lord to create in us a clean heart. Renew a steadfast spirit within us. Do not cast us from your presence, Lord, nor take your Holy Spirit from us. Anybody else in that place? Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, I want to be in your purpose. I want to be captivated by your purpose in your will. I want to be walking out according to your will, living a life that is obedient. I don't have time to compare myself to others. I don't have time to be on social media worried about what other people are doing. I don't have time to be distracted by what is happening in someone else's life. Instead, I want to be focused on what you're doing in my life, how I can attribute to my life. How can I learn to be 
content in this area that you have me in. Not that I speak out of need or out of regard of need, but I have learned, it is a learned behavior, that we learn that wherever we are, right, that we learn wherever we are to be content. That's Philippians 4 and 11. Paul is speaking about being content with our own giftings where God has us in our lives. God wants to do some great things with you in 2016. If he's going to do that, you can't be distracted by comparison. Stop looking at what other people are doing and what other, what's going on in other people's lives. You don't know how much their story looks like Lee or how much their story looks like Rachel, where they wanted to be somewhere else. They wanted to be doing something else and what appears to be the total blessed life that you want, they're still seeking something else from the Lord. You don't know what they've labored for. You don't know what they're, they've toiled after. You don't know what it is that they sought the Lord. How much they've sought God for something. And so when we compare ourselves to others, we really don't acknowledge what's going on in the other person's life. We have no idea what it is that they've been seeking God for. Instead of being concerned about others, we really need the Lord to help us to be focused on ourselves. We really need the Lord to help us to be captivated and consumed with our own purpose. Consuming ourselves with others and what God is doing in other people's lives ends up putting us in a negative place. It causes envy in it. It causes insecurities and everything that is not conducive to moving forward progressively in our purpose. And so we need to seek the Lord and ask God to remove those things that are distracting us, remove those things that are hindering us and keeping us from doing what it is that the Lord wants us to be doing in this season and this time of our life. I would like to pray with you now. Let's go to God in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, how we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your loving kindness, for your faithfulness, and for your tender mercy. God, we thank you for removing those things from our life that are a distraction to us, those things that are hindering us from moving forward in purpose, and those things that are keeping us from moving forward in our calling in our lives. God, we thank you right now that you're just preparing our hearts and our minds, oh God, that we may be able to move forward in the purpose and the calling that you have for us. Remove those things, Lord God, that rise up in our mind, that create um, feelings of defeat and insecurities, Lord God. We pray that you would help us not to be distracted nor consumed with other people, Lord God, but help us to focus on ourselves. Lord God, give us a heart to help others, Lord God, not to condemn them, Lord God, or not to judge, Lord God, but instead help us to be willing to look at other people's lives as an example in many cases of ways that we can learn and improve and enrich our own lives, oh God. Help us to use our tongue to uplift and not to tear down. Father God, we thank you right now for the doors that you are opening, the favor that you're granting. Oh God, we believe it to be so. We come with the right now praise, oh God, because we believe, oh Father, that you will continue, Lord, to move in our lives and to show yourself faithful and to show yourself true. God, we thank you, Lord, for even the challenges and the trying times that patience will have its perfect work, that we will be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. God, we thank you for this time with you, and we thank you for your word. We thank you for everything that you are doing, everything that you've done, and everything that you've yet to do. We come with the right now praise upon our lips, and we say thank you, God, for removing distractions and helping us to no longer compare ourselves to others. We praise you and we thank you in Jesus' sweet holy name. Amen. I want to thank you so much for watching. Thank you for staying tuned. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't, please do. Be sure to comment, follow, like, and share with someone else. I hope this was a blessing to you. And if so, please let me know. I would look forward to seeing all of you next week. Um, I won't share what I'm talking about just yet. We'll see where the Lord leads me. But be sure to put on your wings and soar.